so long. Wait, no. You need to go to medical? You want me to take you? You want me to take in medical? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, no, no. The footage you just saw was taken at the exact moment this woman realized that the police finally knew what happened to her missing five-year-old daughter. Her life is about to change forever. The co-worker riding in the car with her had no way of knowing just how desperate Brianna had become, and what she did next would likely change his life as well. No, 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 What's going on? I do not know where my daughter is. Did she run away? Uh, no. Where was she last seen? She was here with me. What was she wearing? She, a purple shirt and like pink pajamas. It was like a t-shirt. She was on um, the pink. The pink. <clears throat> Say again? Okay, just stay on the line with me. Just do you know where she could have gone? No. Have you checked? Like she just came home. I just picked her up on Halloween night. She was with my mom in Alabama. Okay, is it? Have you checked the house? Yes. Okay. Did she have a favorite hiding spot in the house? Like under no. the bed? I, I checked on her there. Okay, let's check again. Go to her bedroom. And let's check her closet. Nobody else in the house has seen her? No. It's just me and her. Right, are you in her room? Yes. Okay. Have, check under her bed again. This entire interaction was odd, but thankfully, officers soon arrived on scene and were able to begin trying to piece together what exactly was going on. You call, ma'am? All right. Uh, hey, okay, is this your address here? All right. Hey, tell what's happening. <laughs> I'm looking at this point. It's starting to get away from me. It's starting to get away from me. She wasn't in the room. Okay. Have, have you had any problems with anybody? No. Okay. Um, anything unusual? Any? Okay. Uh... Do you live by yourself? Yes, Okay. Oh, uh, the father of the child. No. He's not in her life. Oh, Mr. 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 Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Father of the child is not. He's in Alabama. He's here. Alabama. He's in Alabama. Okay. So. He... Uh, any problems with anyone else as far as any custody dispute between you and him? No. Okay. Has she done this before as far as anything like try to leave or get out or mess with locks or anything like that? Okay. Show me which door was locked real quick. Or oh, unlocked. Was it, was it the back door? Okay. Did you say who was in or? Yeah. Okay. Right. When did you move in? Wait. I started moving. What I signed it is back in June, but... The play the kept getting breaking and broken. Same kind, sorry. Wrong story. I didn't want to move here, but I was like, they can't. They can't. Put in there, please. Okay, when did you actually move in? In June? Or? No, like a week ago, a few days ago. Okay. Today's, uh, today's Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you move in, let's say, over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Alright. Alright. Actually, Brianna and Taylor had only moved in three days ago on November 3rd. Apparently, since June, Brianna had been paying rent on two properties, this house and an apartment across town. Police would get into the details of why she would want to do this later, because as you can see, she seemed more interested in her phone. But you said she, she does not go to school? She does not go to school. And we last saw her at midnight. When she put her to bed. Who normally takes care of her when, when you're not available? Well, like, I'm not, she's with my mom. Where's your mom at? Alabama. Well, I'm just saying, because uh, she's not in school, like, daycare-wise. What, where would she go? Or... Oh, she was with my mom. I just picked her up on Halloween. Oh, oh, okay. Halloween was actually a week ago, so she didn't exactly just pick her up. Grandma. What's the dad's name? Amari Tate. 
Officers managed to get Brianna off her phone long enough for her to share contact details for Taylor's grandmother and biological father. Both Taylor's grandmother and biological father would need to be followed up with, but right now, the focus was kept local. Law enforcement from all over the city started to arrive on Ivy Street as several of the first responders searched the house. While they didn't find any obvious evidence, they definitely noticed a few things out of place. It's kind of odd. Where now, it's more than she had that right. right. There's more than one. There's more than one gun. Out. So the guns were out. Yes. The so you see them right now, there's guns that are out. Okay. It's a shotgun out. It's a pistol out, and then there's an empty holster on the kitchen area. Taylor's bed, a pair of slippers, and an open box of crackers were found in one of the bedrooms. Her jacket and backpack were in the kitchen, next to a pack of unopened air fresheners. Besides this, though, there was nothing. No toys, no drawings, no family photos. The police likely had to wonder if this was just a reflection of the recent move, or possibly something more sinister. When looking closely at Taylor's bed, police noticed a reddish-brown substance on the side of the plastic headboard. A similar stain was found on the bedroom door. Fearing it could be blood, they did a quick field test called hemodent, which tests for the presence of mammal blood. The result was negative, but the officers would keep the stain in mind as the investigation continued. Investigators looked through every inch of the house, but didn't find the little girl. Besides being unlocked, the back door showed no signs of forced entry or other damage. Back outside with Brianna, the officers thought of another place to search. Is this your vehicle? Okay. Can you open it up for me? Does she have a, fra a favorite toy or anything like that that she normally takes with her? Mr. Bear? Bear. Give a recent picture of it. There were more signs of the little girl in the car than inside the house, including a pink unicorn in the back seat. Something about the car, though, made the officer pause. For some reason, the officer felt the need to give the car a sniff test. When looking inside, police also found some cleaning products and a pair of women's sneakers covered in plant matter. They also might have noticed that while the body of the car was cluttered, the trunk was almost perfectly tidy. Unfortunately, the police wouldn't know the significance of this until a more in-depth search of the car was conducted. For now, it was as if Taylor had simply vanished into thin air. All units, be on the lookout for Taylor Rose Williams. Bravo Foxtrot, approximately three foot in height, 50 pounds. She was wearing a pink and purple t-shirt. Determined to find Taylor, the police launched a neighborhood-wide search effort. Ivy Street, as well as multiple adjacent roads, were taped off. Canine units were deployed to track Taylor's scent, but were unsuccessful. Even a helicopter was used to canvas the area, with an equally frustrating lack of results. An Amber Alert was sent out, asking people to be on the lookout for Taylor. Unfortunately, the first attempt used the wrong name, claiming that the missing child was named Brianna. This was corrected in a subsequent alert. This is a picture of the young lady. You remember seeing a little girl here? Never seen her. Never seen her. I never saw her the other day, but I never seen a kid. I've never, never saw seen a, kid. a little girl. But the... Huh. All trash pickup was halted for the neighborhood. Any refuse that had already been removed was recovered from the trucks and spread out for police to comb through. This would eventually provide the most promising lead, but it was just going to take time and a strong stomach to find it. It would take quite a while for officers to find anything of substance as they canvassed the neighborhood, though. So for the time being, the investigation proceeded in other directions, too. Brianna was brought in for an interview, and police hoped she could give them a better idea of how her five-year-old daughter managed to apparently drop off the face of the earth. The following footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor, a former detective, licensed polygraph examiner, and former hostage negotiation commander and instructor, and a certified crime scene investigator, certified instructor for the State of Florida Commission on Criminal Justice Standards, and a graduate in crime scene investigations for violent crimes. Almost immediately, it looks like she gets comfortable, as if she's ready for a nap. Her daughter has been missing for hours, yet she doesn't appear panicked. Frequently, when a child is missing, a lot of officers' efforts have to go towards calming a parent down. 
But clearly that wasn't the case here. This was just the beginning of Brianna's strange behavior. After almost 45 minutes, detectives arrived to speak with Brianna, disrupting her apparently peaceful slumber. Hey, Brianna. Back again. You all right? You need anything? Water or anything? You okay? You need to go to the restroom or anything? You good? You sure? All right. I'm sorry we had to meet under these stressful circumstances. I'm going to, you know, uh, also weird to with our missing persons unit, right? Well, based on the investigation, the age of your child and everything going on, they call, I'm a, also a detective, but I'm assigned to our, our cold case unit, which also has, I'm part of the CART team, which is the child abduction response team. So, and I don't want to stress you out on that. Listen to me. Look. Yeah. I just want to explain what I do, all right, and what we're, what resources, okay? I mean, Nursing Persons is doing a, an outstanding job. I'm just, we're just, uh, we can extend a little bit more than that, okay? And we have a little bit more specialty on that. So that's how I get involved, because I don't, we don't know what happened, okay? We don't know what's going on. We don't know after she left out of the house what happened to her. So um, this could be a criminal investigation, you understand what I'm saying, honey? Look at me. Listen to me, okay? We're doing everything we can. We've got everybody out there looking for her, okay? We've got everything going, but I, I want to make sure we cover everything. As detectives continued to speak with Brianna, officers worked relentlessly and spoke with the residents in the vicinity. Is something going wrong? She's missing. The little girl, supposed to lives here, is missing. Do you remember seeing a little girl here? Never seen her. Never seen her. In the second person that said that. So. And how long have they lived there, he said, do you think? Just to estimate uh, a week, month? I've seen her coming and going. I've never seen her physically, but I see the car here come and going. Like, this whole weekend that passed, nobody was here. That car was not here. This whole that week? car just got here right. at least, like, two days ago, if that. Right. Good morning. Sorry to bother you. Hey, we're looking for a little, uh, little girl. Have you seen a five-year-old uh, wearing... Pink and purple, short fro. Never seen it before. No, I don't think I've seen her at all. After these introductions, Brianna was read her Miranda rights, though she wasn't under arrest. Okay, so Brianna, like I said, we were going to talk to a lot of people today, and it's, let's just start from the very beginning. Okay. So I alarm? I can't. You got to speak a little bit louder so we can hear you. My alarm went off at 5.30, and I got up, like, around maybe, like, a little before 6. Mm -hmm. And then I just went on here and started getting dressed, because mm -hmm. just me and Taylor in the house, she gets up, you know, even if we're not going anywhere, she's like, you know, where we're going, like, okay. So I didn't even bother, you know, mess with her, because I know eventually she's going to get up and start getting dressed. And then I went over to the kitchen, and then I noticed that the back door was open. I'm like, you know, we're not open, but it was unlocked. Mm -hmm. I like, lost the back door unlocked. And that's when I went to her room and she wasn't in there. As the officers continued their interviews, one of the residents had curious information to share. He left out of here about 5.36 o'clock this morning. And uh, he left out of here about 5.30 this morning. He's in his about twenties or thirties, maybe late. Oh. He's been living here by himself, and this place about is a mess. Black male twenty, ish. Uh, probably about twenty-eight, but yeah, this place is a. The officer ran a background check on this suspicious individual who lived near the house where Brianna and Taylor just moved. As this was happening, investigators continued to gather more information from Brianna. It was almost seven o'clock. Okay, so then you went into her room and you saw that. She wasn't in, she wasn't in her bed. Mm -hmm. I looked under, well, she, she got like a, little, a little baby bed, so she can't really sit underneath the bottom of me there anyway. Uh -huh. um, I checked her closet. Uh -huh. Then I went in my room and looked underneath my bed. I know she wanted to come in my room. Like, she's, I don't know, like, she she's very well-mannered. Like, she's, she'll knock or, you know, ask to come in. Okay. And I checked in my bathroom. I checked my closet. She wasn't in there. So then I just started checking the cabinets. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't in there either. Like, okay, I'm going to go outside. And I checked my car just to be, um, you know, 
be sure that, you know, I definitely didn't leave her in the freaking car. Okay. So um, I was underneath the car. She wasn't there either. Note that there's no real emotion in Brianna's voice as she talks about looking for her child. Okay, and then what? Then I just stopped calling um, 911. Okay. She, I can't find her. Okay. What time did you see her before then? It was like around midnight. Brianna said that Taylor put herself to bed around midnight. While this wasn't impossible, the late hour and Taylor's alleged independence likely struck investigators as unusual given her age. However, this was nothing compared to the strange turn Brianna's story took next. Did you check on her prior to you going to sleep? No. Okay, so you assume that she was asleep? Yeah. Okay. Did you hear any noise coming from her room or anything like that? Not from her room, but... There were like, um, I, I can't explain it. Like, there were like, like when you're dragging something or you move something, like, but it was coming from upstairs. And either way, like, I just grab my gun and, you know, walk around to make sure, you know, okay, um, there's nobody in here. Coming but from upstairs of the house that you're in? And there are no stairs. That's the part that I didn't understand, but it definitely sounded like it was coming from the roof. Okay. Did you wake up hearing this noise? Yes, like the um the little whatever noise it was, it sounded like like it it changes. Like sometimes I can hear like near where I sleep. Sometimes it's like back towards the um kitchen area. Okay, and like, it sounded like dragging noise. Yes, it's like somebody's moving something or walking. So you you said you grabbed your gun. So you have yes, a gun. I grabbed my gun and then did I you check the around. house? Yes, I walk around the um open spaces that I know you know people can come in through. And I didn't see anything. Did you go outside and check? I didn't go outside. Okay, so you just checked around the house? Yeah. Did you go in your daughter's room at that time and look at it in? No. Okay. Brianna said that she didn't see anything amiss when she searched the house and that all the doors were still locked. Still, if she was alarmed enough to arm herself before walking through the house, it makes no sense that she wouldn't take a few seconds to check on her sleeping child. Some of the officers and residents shared a similar sentiment. I hope they exhausted the, uh, the, the, the parental angle. You know what I'm saying? Knocking on every door we can. What kind? Of, okay, now that she was missing since midnight. Yeah, purple PJs on. Um, the back door was probably open. What mother don't check on the child? My son and grandson stay with us, and my son is 36. As a habit, I go right past the room to make sure he's still breathing. Right. So, um, if you heard the noise, why did you say you didn't go into her room? Because I had a gun. I didn't want to. Go up in there again. Um, she got bars on her window, so I just assumed, like, you, you can't get in there. You said you don't like guns around her, but are they laid out like that? So she's not normally. Like, when she's sleeping, then yes, I pull them out because, like I said, like the place they're broken into. So I sleep with my guns, like, right there. Police left the matter alone for the time being and switched to a different topic. Once again, though, the conversation didn't go as they were likely expecting. What do you think happened this morning? I, I don't know. Where do you think she's at? I have no clue. Because she, she wouldn't leave. And I don't even know, like, did they even did they find Mr. Bear? Because she wouldn't go anywhere without um, that thing. What? Uh, this little, little pink teddy bear she calls Mr. Bear. The Mr. Bear angle was potentially helpful, as it was something the searchers could keep a lookout for. By this point, police were likely realizing that something was seriously wrong. What that was exactly remained to be seen. Where were you staying prior to... This address? The South Side address. And how long did you live at the South Side address? We were there for like a year and a half. Okay. And why were you moving? Why were you moving? Because I wanted to move to a different area. Like, I always do this. I did this in Virginia. Like, um, I live in Norfolk, then like a year later, I moved to Virginia Beach. Okay. It's out of habit. I just like to move. So, when was your lease up at the South Side address? Um, in May. So your lease was up in May, but you, yes. but you were still living there. Yes. Um. It was up. It went to month to month because I was supposed to put in a notice. They wanted a sixty day notice, and mm -hmm. I kept forgetting to put it in. Brianna also said that as she was preparing to move to the house on Ivy Street, a large problem with the residents became evident. But I was actually like trying to prepare to move out, and I went back like around the fourth of July. To which like I put it to the um, Ivy place, and that's when I saw like the back door was open and like somebody had moved the refrigerator outside. 
So I called the property manager because I thought maybe, you know, he was like renovating or something. He didn't tell me. But um, he was like, no. So he went ahead and changed the locks. So for six months, you had two residents. Yes. What three days ago made you need to move urgently if you were there for six, if you had both places for six months? That was the day that I actually was like able to find movers because that was the whole issue. I was like, I didn't you know um, which company am I going to go for. I've been okay. asking around. It was like, you know, just ask people for work. It's like, mm-hmm. no, I don't want to ask people. But you found someone from Craigslist, right? Yes. Which you say you do everything from Craigslist. A lot of the majority, things. Like, so why hadn't you done that six months ago? Just never crossed my mind. Police would come to find that many things concerning the investigation didn't seem to cross her mind. What they would find when they searched her other residence, too, would leave them shocked. So on Sunday, you get a hold of movers? Yes. Okay. Did they take everything? Just um, the, the big things. Why didn't you, if you were paying them, how, why didn't they take everything? Oh, because it was, it was the last minute I was at. No, I hadn't packed everything. Like clothes and stuff. Um, most of the clothes and stuff are still there. Okay. So what was the urgency? Why couldn't you wait to find a mover once you had everything packed up and ready to go so that you can move everything in one go around? I didn't even think about that. We're going to call the movers. We're going to call your mom. Mm-hmm. And we're going to verify some information. Okay. You know where this is going to lead to? No. Okay. So the movers, it was pretty abrupt. You needed to be out of that house that day, Sunday according to the conversation that one of my partners had with, with the detective, with the, the movers. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was in, like, detective, what was the urgency? Uh, it wasn't urgent. According I to the movers, it was, that. I had to be out today. I've been telling that. Okay. All right. Nothing Brianna is saying is making sense, and it's hard to believe she would think the detective would believe her, but they don't confront her yet. Anybody take care of your of the five-year-old, of your daughter? No. Well, she was going to the CDC on base. Okay. So she, um, kindergarten and the CDC. When was the last time she was at CDC? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I'm asking Probably. you some no, questions. No, no, no. Okay. Like May. Last there May in May? June, yeah. When police checked with the daycare on base, the administration office told them that Taylor had last been there on April 27th and was officially withdrawn shortly after. They also shared that Taylor had previously been in speech therapy. When police checked in with the therapist's office, they likely noticed a concerning pattern. Taylor had attended regularly for 13 weeks, but then never came back. After two no-show appointments, she was discharged from the system at the beginning of May. And I understand she was in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, she was in Montana. Okay. Your mom, who's your mom? Carissa. Carissa. And how long was she in Tuscaloosa? When did she, she go there? Was off and on. Um, she, she's been there pretty much all summer, actually. So you went down there to pick her up for, and brought her back here for one day? It, um, over the weekend. And then Cause, you, yeah, because okay. it's only um, like seven, eight hour drive. Like, I used to drive from Virginia to okay. Alabama over a weekend, and that's 17 hours. So. Okay. So you bring her back on the 31st. How long was that visit? That one was since the beginning of October. So the full month she stayed in October yeah. with your mom, Carissa. And prior to you dropping her down there October 1st, or the first part of October, no, yeah, yeah. when did you, when, when was the last time she was there before then? Like the first week of September, she was here. Mm-hmm. I think it, whenever the storm hit. Would your mom be able to tell us what days when she last saw your daughter? She, I think we have her she, number, right? Yeah. So if we call her, she's going to say that she saw her in the month of August. Yeah. Brianna had no way to know that the police had already spoken with her mother and they would confront her with what Carissa told them soon enough. Okay, so, so when she was here with you, mm-hmm. During the weeks, our weekends, and you had to work, who was watching her? Oh, no, like, when she was here, like, those days that I'm off, so no one is watching her besides me. So since you've gotten back on the 31st, you have not been to work? No, I'm still on leave. You're on leave leave until this morning. How long have you been on leave? It's been since October the 29th or the 30th. The 28th? I'm not sure. You would take her to your mom every time? 
Yes, or I just won't leave her there. That's why. I was like, I couldn't, the back and forth, I, and I didn't want anybody else watching her. Like, I don't know people here like that. But you were going to take her to the lady you met on Craigslist today to yeah. watch her. Okay. When searching Brianna's phone, police had come across communications between her and the woman she'd found on Craigslist to watch Taylor. When police followed up with the woman, she told them that Brianna had texted her this morning to say her services wouldn't be needed after all. This was only one of the many discrepancies police would find in Brianna's story. You said your hours changed, so did you change positions or your job title or what? No, just the hours. What is the norm? What is it supposed to be? Oh, I don't know the rotation. You don't know your rotation at work? Not the um, duty hour rotation. So you don't know? I couldn't, You couldn't tell me right now when you were going to be on call next? Um, do I, if I had my planner, I could, but not no. My planner wrote my phone, put them in there. So how, I, know, I think Friday it? would be the next time I had duty because I was on leave, so... Standing duty was part of Brianna's job as an enlisted Navy personnel. This tended to be a 12-hour shift once or twice a week. The fact that Brianna didn't know her duty schedule, especially since she claimed she would have had to arrange childcare whenever she was scheduled, was odd. However, this paled in comparison to what police were about to reveal. They called your mom. Mm -hmm. She hasn't seen your daughter since January. Yes, she has. Okay. Why would she say that? October. Why would she say that? This is, this is Carissa. This yes. is your mom. That's my mom. Why would she say that? She would not say that. In a subsequent interview, Carissa Williams repeated what she'd told investigators that day on the phone. The implications were spine-chilling. Please note that the police department made redactions to remove Taylor's name from the recording. So you hadn't heard from her in two years and talked to her? Or... Prior up to that, yes. So out of the blue, in two years, he called you in two no, it, it didn't go quite like that. Well, tell me how it went. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't bring it in my personal business. It's hard to imagine anything more personal than a missing grandchild, but Carissa still seemed reluctant to go into detail about what she knew. I want you to understand the severity of what you're doing. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. And what, with me wanting you to understand the severity of what's going on is I don't care about anybody's personal life. We are going to find and whatever happens, whatever gets in the way between us, finally, we got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's not a threat. That's a promise. Have you had any conversation with her about telling her commanding officer anything as far as you, if he calls you, that she was yes. coming to get That's the part that I didn't get. That she did, this was just last week. Tell me about that. Now, she did call, um, whatever day that I want to say it was. Halloween. I want to say it was actually the day of Halloween. So last Thursday, 31st. Yes. She told me that if he called to tell him that she was down to pick up from me for Halloween. Mind you, I never, I haven't seen it in two years. Um, so I'm thinking like, well, okay, she just met this new guy. Maybe she you know, took a little time out to go meet him or whatever, and she just used that lie to get away. But I couldn't tell you. She said, so I'm like, where is the matter of fact? I asked her that day. I said, well, what, what's the one? She said, oh, she in the back seat. So I'm like, okay. But she never did pick up the phone and say, hey, I never did hear say anything. Police followed up with the man Carissa alleged Brianna had recently started seeing, particularly since Brianna hadn't mentioned him and, in fact, insisted that she didn't have a boyfriend. However, he didn't have much information to share. He was only vaguely aware that Brianna had a daughter and assumed that the little girl had been staying with her father when he and Brianna were together. When police checked with Taylor's father, Maurice, he hadn't seen the little girl lately either. All he could tell them was that the last time he did see her at the funeral for Brianna's grandmother, he didn't think she was being fed enough as she was very small. He added that he had a difficult time checking up on Taylor after that, though, as Brianna changed her phone number frequently. Maurice provided investigators with a DNA sample and said he was willing to assist in any way that he could. Back with Brianna's mother, Carissa told police that she'd previously watched Taylor for extended periods of time, but that ended when Brianna enrolled her in daycare on the naval base. The last time she'd seen the little girl in person was also at the funeral for Brianna's grandmother. Police weren't ready to believe Carissa just yet, 
however, due to some interesting evidence recovered from Brianna's phone. I can tell you it's pinging at a tower, a tower in the vicinity of this area that it's pinging off of. What's throwing us for a loop right now is if she's living in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. why is her phone pinging in our town at all? Despite this, Carissa swore that she hadn't seen Brianna or Taylor on Halloween. Police were still working on downloading the data from the GPS in Brianna's car to determine an exact route, so soon enough, they would know for sure who was telling the truth. The search of Brianna's phone turned up something else concerning, too. Police found a text message conversation in which Brianna had told a former co-worker in Virginia that Taylor had become a nightmare, as she was, according to her, stealing food and misbehaving. In Alabama, Carissa was so adamant of her innocence that she got Brianna's father, Wayne, on the phone to join the discussion and brainstorm what might be going on. I don't understand why she would even lie and say that she was picked up from me. Man, she lied me. I've never been in trouble a day in my life. She is lying. She's trying to cover up something. Not sure what it is, but she is lying. Well, you have no idea what she's trying to cover up, though. I have no idea what she's trying to cover up. That's the one thing I don't know. Someone was lying. But whether it was Brianna or Carissa was yet to be determined, as was the exact reason of why. Investigators would follow up on the Alabama lead, but as promised, also caught up with the movers Brianna had hired on Craigslist. They had nothing reassuring to say either. They never saw your daughter. They never saw you put her in the car. They never saw her at the other house. They never saw her. Why is that? I didn't want them to see her. <laughs> Why not? Because I don't know them like that. Well, I mean, you're not introducing me to her, but how did you, did you yeah. leave her at the house on Southside and then go to, to, to Ivy without her? Yeah. They never saw her. They never saw you put her in the car. So what happened? Nothing happened. Well, where was your daughter? She was with me. She's always She wasn't with, with you. Yes, she was. The two movers are saying that they never saw. They heard water running and you said that she was in there, but they never saw her. If what the movers were saying was true, it seemed like Taylor hadn't been at either of Brianna's residences. Carissa said she hadn't seen the girl in two years, and the child care records on the Navy base showed that Taylor's attendance became spotty throughout the month of April, and she was officially withdrawn back in May, around six months before she was reported missing. A new horrifying question was quickly coming to the forefront of the investigation. When was the last time anyone besides Brianna had seen Taylor? Shockingly, the little girl's mother was wasn't inclined to help answer this question. I'm done with this. I don't want to talk no, no, about no. it. Yes, I am done because you're, no, you're lying to me now. So How no. am I lying to you? I'm not lying to you. I just said that my mom said, I literally picked my mom, I mean, not my mom. I'm my just telling you what my partner said. And I'd like to explain to you, but huh? I don't know where to get that from because I literally went down there. Um, do you want to talk Halloween to the, night. do you want to talk to the detectives I spoke with her and then get that, find out what the information they gave? Mom, I'm done with this. Because I don't know where this is going, but no, you're, no. <laughs> like, it's the second time this has happened. Like, some other lady was, like, saying stuff that I didn't even say. Like, she was twisting my words. Like, no. Brianna has no idea that her odd behavior was quickly becoming the least of the police's concern as they were searching her apartment at that very moment. Just like they'd done at Ivy Street, police canvassed the area and talked to Brianna's neighbors. Disturbingly, very few of them recalled ever seeing a little girl. One man who did, named Carlos Johnson, said he found Taylor roaming the apartment complex unaccompanied back on April 17, 2019, looking for her mother. He took her home only to find her wandering the parking lot again a few days later. Carlos said that Taylor didn't appear frightened or distressed, like the situation was familiar to her. He also told police that he would see her waving at him from her window at times when Brianna's car was gone suggesting to him that the little girl was alone. If police thought this was bad, then they must have been horrified when they entered the apartment itself. From the outside, Brianna's apartment was unassuming and looked just like any of the others in the complex. But as soon as the door was open, it was clear that something awful had happened inside. 
The entryway to the apartment was filled with trash, as was the kitchen. It was so cluttered with random items and refuse that it was nearly unusable. The living room was not in any better condition, having been taken over by a heaping mountain of trash and personal belongings. It seemed no effort had been made to separate the two categories. There were children's toys and clothing included in the mess, most stained with what appeared to be feces. One of the toys in particular probably stood out to police, thanks to Brianna's description. A pink stuffed animal was found in the mountain of refuse, possibly Mr. Bear, the toy Brianna said Taylor refused to go anywhere without. Police would face a heartbreaking reason why Mr. Bear was there as they searched more of the apartment. Bleach and urine remover, along with more air fresheners, were also found in the apartment. If police thought the living room and kitchen were in bad condition, they were in for a shock when they entered the master bedroom. Police had to move more trash and soiled belongings to even gain entry into the room. The carpet was encrusted with filth, which appeared to include more human waste. When they opened the closet, the situation changed from merely disgusting to horrific. We just want clarity. Later, but not, it's, it's a late day. I just want my baby home. And, I, and that's, and what, that's we're what we're trying to do. That's well, the and, whole and, thing, because there's no way my mom would tell you she hadn't seen us since January. Like, what? And that's why I'm asking you. Do you want to continue to talk to us about what's going on? I do not, not right now. No, like this is going too far. Like, okay, so you don't want to answer any questions as to the whereabouts of your daughter. I don't know where she is. If well, I and I'm trying to get the background. Here. Yes or no? I, I've told you everything that I know. Like I, I don't know. But my you don't mom, want to answer any more questions. Away here now. Hmm. My mom is on the way here now. Okay. Do you want so to answer? You want to talk to her when she gets here? You can talk to her when she. But gets you don't her. want to talk to us anymore. I do not want to talk okay. to her. Okay. I need to call my job. Well, we'll take care of that for you. Do you need anything like a bathroom or water or anything like that? I need to talk to legal. Because I actually need to talk to them about the lease. Okay. Do you need water? Do you need a bathroom or anything mm -hmm. like that right now? If you need anything, lock, knock on the door. The detectives would revisit Brianna in a bit, but went to check in on other aspects of the investigation. By this time, it was no longer just the Jacksonville police involved in the search. They'd been joined by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Department, the Alabama Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and even the Naval Criminal Investigation Service, or NCIS. Additionally, the neighborhood canvas around Ivy Street continued the whole time Brianna was at the police station. Just before 10.30 p.m., officers in the area ran into a surprise visitor. What's your relation? My father. My father. Yeah, her father. Okay. All right. Give me one sec. In short, again, the sergeant really, we don't have much to say right, right now. If you want, you can go down that way. Okay. To our sick command post and, you know, let them know your relation. Right. Uh, but there's, you don't have any information. There's no can't tell where she is. This is Back at the police department, Brianna was still in the interrogation room. If she was worried about her daughter or even concerned about what police might find when searching her apartment, she did a fantastic job of hiding it. She was left waiting but found a few ways to help pass the time, including fixing her nails, redoing her hair, and going to sleep. Four more hours went by, during which Brianna again attempted to get some sleep in the interrogation room. Why am I still in here? Uh, I'll, I'll get some answers for you. Um, you just gonna have to need your need your patience for now. We're all we're all kind of sitting around and working diligently. We're not really sitting around doing nothing, but I'll, I'll get some answers for you. Okay. My commandos. Yes, I do believe so. So I've been here all day. I know. Just just be patient with this, please. Unluckily, when a fresh set of detectives came in, it seemed eight hours of time out hadn't made Brianna any more cooperative. Hey, I'm just here to bro Detective Devereux. A couple things we need to go over with you real quick. Um, you're gonna be free to go. However, um, you're not gonna be able to go back to Ivy Street or um, Southside tonight, and we still have your phone. Um, so, who do you need to contact, or can we take you somewhere, or what do you? Mm -hmm. um, what's the best option for you? I can get a room, but my wallet is at Ivy. 
Brianna never came up with any options of her own, so the police called her command, who sent a petty officer from the base to come pick her up. Notably, over a total of more than 11 hours spent at the police station, Brianna never once asked for an update on the search for her daughter. When Brianna's mother Carissa heard about her daughter's lack of cooperation, she was perplexed. Why wouldn't she want to talk when her is missing? You know her better than I do. Because some of the things, a lot of, well, I, I can't even say some of the things, a lot of the things just not adding up to me. Investigators also asked Carissa some questions about Brianna's personality in general to see if it would help make sense of her odd behavior. How does she, is, is she like an emotional person? You're, you're do she right. shut down and she feel like it's getting too much? No, I'm just saying if something traumatic happens, is she one that's going to show emotions? You know, use an example, your, grandma, your mom's feeling. How was she doing that? Well, she didn't cry. No, she didn't cry? No. Brianna was reportedly very close to her maternal grandmother, who had raised Brianna for a large portion of her childhood. The fact that Brianna did not express grief at the time of her death may have stood out to police as eerily similar to her behavior in the interrogation room. Investigators also learned that Brianna was known to visit her grandmother's gravesite in Alabama regularly, so regularly, in fact that more than one friend suggested the police search that area for Taylor, too. And that's exactly what they did. Over the next week, the search expanded from Jacksonville, Florida, to the area surrounding Linden, Alabama. Before Carissa's interview concluded, police had one last question for her, probably the hardest one yet. If she did something by accident, would she tell you? I'm not sure that's why I wanted to talk to you. The investigation continued on for the rest of the week. The mounting evidence police collected was far from reassuring. None of it, however, led them to Taylor. Growing desperate, police decided to try talking to Brianna a different way. Since Brianna's father, Wayne, had been cooperative so far, detectives asked him to make a controlled call to Brianna to see if he could learn anything. It didn't go well. Yeah, I've been thinking, and I was wondering, is there anything you can do? Anything you remember? Anybody look? wrong or anything you know somebody that might have everything i know you know everything with your phone i mean even other than that but they know everything i know okay um, what's what's in your phone i'm talking like what like, would help I, I us don't have anything extra like what, they literally have everything like what we need to find <laughs> so i'm saying that, if you tell me that i can call them you know what i'm saying i still got to check the number down there check the big number i can call him and tell him what to look for in your phone but how am I supposed to know what to look for on the phone? Yeah, but I thought... See, I don't want to talk about this right now. I'm trying to go see. Like, I don't know what else to tell y'all. Y'all keep calling me and asking me the same questions over and over again. Like, trust me. Brianna's annoyance raises a host of red flags. What she did next, though, stood out the most. You said everything's in your phone, but what can what else can it do to find? Look, I don't know. Yeah, but... I just up on I can't believe she hung up on me. Police had better luck when they recruited two of Brianna's closest friends, Chelsea and Doriel, to also try and make a controlled call. Hey, how you doing? Okay. You just been resting today? Yeah, I'm going to work. Go by the water. Chief said anything to you today? No. He called and asked if I needed something to come here, but that's it. You ain't talked to your dad in the day? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, no. Did he go back? Is your mama going to come down? I have no clue. You're so quiet. You miss us already? No. Nope. <laughs> you <laughs> don't miss us? <laughs> I missed that, bro. Just because you had. I'm going to talk to them now. Anything been on your mind today? Hmm? You had anything on your mind today? No. With Taylor's disappearance so fresh in everyone's minds, there had to be a reason that the case wasn't weighing on Brianna. As was becoming typical, she didn't seem inclined to share what that reason was. Like, ain't no, like, coverage on Taylor no more. Like, everything kind of, like, died down. Like, we, like, super kind of nervous that they just kind of, like, like, people didn't forget. Like, basically, they just, um, like, they moving on in the world. And what? They just gonna forget her? We need you to say something because, like, that's the only thing I feel like that'll bring, like, some light back to her story. Some. Well, we really just want to know just what's going on. We still, like, you know we're gonna be there for you. 
Mm-hmm. We want to be there because we want to know what's going on for that closure. I don't even know what's going on. It ain't been, you ain't heard nothing? No, like nobody talks to me. Like, the only time somebody call for me is like, on what y'all doing? I'm doing, I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure my chief is doing it to make sure I'm not. I didn't off myself because he calls like very randomly. People come knocking on the door like, oh, you're not home living for bro. You know what room this is. Like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Especially yeah, you're the CDO too, like you're the um, you know, the duty person. Yeah. I know why you're here. Don't act like, you know, you just popped up here. Time would soon reveal that the Navy command had been more on top of things than anyone could have imagined. Brianna's co-workers weren't the only ones who'd been attempting to check up on her. Did your mama come down there? Because she had told us that well, she had told her daddy that she was coming down uh, yesterday. She been coming since when? She's talking about saying she's been coming there since the day that it happened. But, like, she just... Like, I've given up on her. Like, I don't know what the hell going on with my mom. I think you might need to ask her, like, why y'all story is different. Like, why you saying that to her if she, you know, she really was here? Mm-hmm. What, like, what, what that's about? You need to ask her that. Do you think I'm gonna get a true answer? That's all this I don't know, but you 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 don't want to at least want to know why she's saying like, that. Like, what is her reason? I, mean, I do, but do y'all really believe she's gonna tell the truth? She hasn't told the truth yet. I don't know what her what her reasoning is for this to keep the lie going for so long. Cause I mean, it's too late now. <laughs> she can't backtrack. Chelsea and Doriel then asked Brianna about the possibility of there being evidence in the apartment she left when she moved to the house on Ivy Street. Do you think it's something maybe in the old apartment that they'll find that'll help? Like, no. Because <laughs> if they did, they would have found it. Remember, they closed off both of them. They closed off for, what, three days, four days, almost a week. Police had, in fact, found shocking evidence in Brianna's apartment, specifically the bedroom closet. Brianna had to have guessed what they'd found, but still chose to remain silent on the matter. So, Brianna, mm-hmm. you hadn't thought about, like, her just being out there by herself? You know she's scared of everything. Like, that, you don't think about that? Girl, I don't want to talk, think about that right now. I mean, well, I've been thinking about it. Okay, then don't know think about that. It's cold. That's kind of why I just, I think I can't sleep knowing that it's, and you know how innocent she was. Like, she really clinged to the people she know. I think that's why it's eating me up so much. Hauntingly, Brianna's only response was silence. If he think it's a good idea, would you be okay talking to the detectives again? Yes. Yes. The same ones, or you want some new ones? Oh, yeah, no, not that lady. <laughs> okay, bruh, that's what I was going to ask you, oh, man. I'm talking to the lady. Based on Brianna's lack of cooperation and some other concerning evidence that would be addressed soon, police decided to place her under round-the-clock surveillance. It didn't take long for this to pay off. Early on November 11th, just five days after Taylor went missing, Brianna was seen donating some of Taylor's belongings. This included stuffed animals, clothes, and even some unopened packages of toys. Around the same time, the efforts of all the officers digging through countless heaps of trash finally paid off. They stumbled upon a box addressed to Brianna, along with certificates from the Navy with her name on them. This wasn't what they were most interested in, however. Also in the trash were several notes from the daycare center on the Navy base, requesting a change of clothes and a toothbrush for Taylor. In the trash, police also found several art projects, which police assumed had been made by Taylor. One of the projects was a handmade card from Taylor to her mother. Why Brianna didn't want these items, especially when her daughter was missing, was a mystery. There was also still the issue of what was discovered in the closet in Brianna's apartment. To say it was disturbing would be a massive understatement. One of the first things investigators noticed was a foul odor emanating from the space. It was impossible to say if this was a result of more feces found inside or the mysterious stains covering the walls and carpets. It seems a minor effort had been made to control the smell by sprinkling baking soap soda on the rug. Police took multiple DNA swabs from the inside of the closet, collecting samples from the walls, floors, and each stain. It would take time to receive DNA results, so they also conducted a field test to determine if any of the stains were human blood. Dismayingly, while the swabs didn't immediately indicate blood, many of the stains on the walls reacted when sprayed with luminol. 
fearing the worst, police opted to have a cadaver dog brought to the apartment. However, the smell of feces and trash was so overwhelming that the dog was unable to effectively alert. Police resorted to ripping out the carpet from the closet and taking it outside. In the fresh air, the dog was much more effective and alerted on the carpet right away, indicating that at least some of the stains came from human remains. This wasn't the only area that got a response. When cadaver dogs were brought to Brianna's car, they alerted in no less than three areas, the driver's seat, the rear seats, and trunk. When police took a closer look at the trunk of the car, they noticed that there was an unknown whitish residue on the interior. They also found a broken fingernail and an air freshener jammed into the trunk lid, which likely came from the package found in the Ivy Street house. The vehicle had a pervasive scent of cleaning chemicals. Despite the car wash, they also located some reddish dirt on the underside of the vehicle that matched the soil on the dirt road in Alabama. There was now no way to deny it. This was no longer a missing persons case, but rather an investigation into a death. Brianna's mother had feared this outcome all along. I want your honest opinion on what you think is wrong. Well, to be honest, I think she died, flipped the switch. What would Ronnie make her flip the switch? Mm -hmm. Does she have a sex problem? Mm, I never witnessed it. Are you aware witness. of it, though, whether you witnessed it or not? Mm -hmm. Are you aware of it? Of her having a sex problem, even though you're saying you haven't witnessed it, are you aware that she has one? What makes you think she flipped the switch? Uh, so I would say just speaking with her dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. So he's, no, he just said, you know, she gets angry at like the simple things. He just asked her uh -huh. to tell his girlfriend thank you and she got so mad that she just blocked him on all social media and completely stopped talking to him. Police planned to place Brianna under arrest on November 12th, following a final gruesome discovery. The charges she faced at this time were child neglect and providing false information to law enforcement officials. Her chief was sent to pick her up on base and bring her to the police station for booking. However, no matter what he may have expected, what happens next is so shocking it must have shaken him to the core. Hey, for watching bad news stuff like that on the news and I hate going back and forth with it where everything's going on. Um, but you know now they're saying that you're a person of interest now. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Open up, open up, so oh shit, you alright? Should I have some napkins or something, you okay? It was quickly becoming obvious that something was wrong with Brianna, but the chief could not have possibly predicted how dire the situation was about to become. Say 
get to go to medical. Which, are you okay? Um, you need to go to medical. You want me to take you? You want me to take in medical? There was only so long the chief could wait for a coherent answer before he decided he needed to take action, and it wasn't a moment too soon, because what was coming would likely stay with him for the rest of his career, if not his life. Williams, 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 talk, talk to me, Williams, talk to me. Just minutes later, as the pair were en route to the hospital, the worst happened. Faint pulse, faint pulse, faint pulse. No, 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 no,
and bone fragments were found. Most of the skull was found a short distance away, along with a clump of human hair that might have been Taylor's. The remains had been scattered and seriously damaged by animal activity. As a result, police were only able to recover a small portion of what they suspected to be Taylor's body. However, they would have to wait on DNA testing to prove it, since the remains were almost completely skeletal. Police were pretty sure about how the body came to be in Alabama, but the only person who could confirm their theory was Brianna, and she remained in critical condition. A search of Brianna's quarters on the Navy base led investigators to believe that Brianna had ingested laundry detergent. Once they knew what they were treating her for, doctors were able to more effectively intervene and saved Brianna's life. Once she was discharged from the hospital, she was brought back to the police station and given one more chance to tell her side of the story. Right here. Do you drink coffee or anything? You want coffee? Soda, water, nothing? Okay. Just like before, Brianna quickly made herself as comfortable as possible and appeared to try to go to sleep. This time, though, she only had to wait about 20 minutes before detectives came in to talk with her. Brianna? Good morning. I need to sit up and go over some paperwork again, okay? Then I'm going to go over the rest of your rights with you, okay? And I want you to just acknowledge that you understand. You do not have to make a statement or say anything. You understand that? I'm going to need a yes or a no, okay? Is that a yes? Okay. The detectives advised Brianna of the rest of her rights once again. Hey, Brianna, did um the nurse assist you with your throat issue that you were telling me about at the hospital? A little, a little bit. Does it feel better today? Not complete. Are you normally just quiet all the time, just real low key? Don't do a lot of talking. I am too, I'm kind of shy. Can you tell? Can you tell? I first, I'm, we need to have a good conversation, so I'm gonna need you to sit up from that thing over there and stop leaning on that wall and talk to me, okay? Look at me when I'm talking. We've had an investigation going on for a while. Our investigation has led us to some things in Alabama, okay? And what we need to do today with you is we need to talk about what's going on out there. Now, where in Alabama are you from? Are you from Alabama? Is that a yes? You got to say yes or no to me, okay? I can't have a head dialogue and we can't have misunderstanding. Are you from Alabama? I don't want to talk. You don't want to talk? Okay. You're tired, you don't want to talk. So you don't want to talk to the police at all? Okay. With that anticlimactic end to the interview, Brianna followed her pattern of behavior throughout the case and went back to sleep. Ultimately, police didn't need Brianna's cooperation in order to answer their remaining questions. Four days after this failed attempt to speak with Brianna, on November 25th, DNA testing proved the remains found in the Alabama woods belonged to Taylor. As a result, Brianna was now facing charges of murder. Due to the poor condition of the remains and the fact that the searchers were only able to recover about 10% of Taylor's skeleton, it was impossible to determine a cause of death. However, analysis of her tooth enamel and skull showed evidence of serious malnutrition. They also couldn't provide an exact time of death and were only able to say that the little girl had passed anywhere from several weeks to several months ago, between May and November 2019. Given that the rate of decomposition is dependent on the size of the human and environmental factors, decomposition can start as early as 24 hours after death or as late as 72 hours after death. In conditions where the body isn't exposed to the sun and is in a climate-controlled environment, it would take at least four weeks for the body to begin to skeletonize. In this particular case, Taylor was a small, malnourished child and covered with a plastic shower curtain. This would slow down the rate of decomposition by locking in moisture and protecting the remains from bugs and direct sunlight. The issue of knowing the rate of decomposition in this case is the variable of animal activity, which could expose the remains to the elements at different rates. 
if her remains had no indication of animal activity, were wrapped in plastic and placed in the shallow grave shortly after time of death. It could take over 30 days to begin to see skeletonization. It's a very real possibility that the little girl starved to death, locked in a closet by her mother and left to waste away in filth. The reason for the stains on the closet walls would remain a mystery, though, without a determined cause of death. In September 2022, Brianna pled guilty to second-degree murder. Though her attorney repeatedly requested she face a reduced sentence due to her exemplary military record, she was sentenced to life in prison. Though her incarceration will do nothing to bring her daughter back, at least justice for the innocent little girl was served.